Hi there, welcome to my channel. My name is Prabhjot Kaur. In today's video, we're going to walk through a paper called Direct Speech to Speech Translation with a Sequence to Sequence Model. This is a paper that was published in 2019 by Google and it is one of the first few papers that present a model for direct speech to speech translation. What we mean by direct speech to speech translation is that there is no intermediate conversion to text or text to text translation that is happening when we train this model or when we use this model for inference. The model that is presented in this paper is formally called translator tron so we'll study the details of this model without further ado let's get started to summarize the contributions of this paper the model that is presented in this paper is trained end to end meaning we take the speech in one language and speech in another language and use that for training additionally this model is able to synthesize the translated speech using the voice of the source speaker. So when we do the translations, this model is able to preserve the voice of the source speaker. So that's pretty impressive. The authors say that the performance of this model is slightly below the cascade the baseline approaches, which use the cascade method, which is um, fair enough because this is a challenging task and it's a it's it's a new direction that we're going towards okay before we go into the details of this model i want to just highlight again what we mean by cascade approach or the conventional approaches so in the conventional approaches for translating one speech a speech in one language to speech in another language what we have is essentially three main subtasks. So let's say we want to translate a speech in Spanish to a speech in English. So in the cascade approach, what we would do is we take the speech in Spanish and convert that speech into text in Spanish using automatic speech, rec uh, automatic speech recognition. Then we take that Spanish text and translate that into English text. This is called machine translation. Finally, we take that English text and convert that into English speech using text to speech. So there are three components that work in sequence to make up this cascade approach. The approach that is presented in this paper does not go through all of these steps it essentially takes one speech and directly converts into into speech in a different language so that's what we what what we mean by direct speech to speech now the drawbacks of using cascade approach are very well presented in this paragraph and i'll leave those up to you so i'll just go into the details of the model of the translator the translator tron model let's go and look at this figure. The translator tron model is composed of three main elements. The first element is a sequence to sequence model. So we take the input speech, which is, we don't give it the waveform, we just convert that speech into spectrograms and that goes as input. So we, that goes into an encoder and then the output of the encoder goes into Get this concat for now so the output of this encoder goes into multi-head attention and the output of the multi-head attention goes into a decoder so this is one part or one component of the model so it just basically converts a uh, speech in one language here going from spanish to a uh, speech in another language which is uh, which is in in this case is english so this is a sequence to sequence model then the second component we have is the vocoder. So the vocoder essentially is used to convert this spectrogram to a waveform so that we can actually hear it as a speech. Then the third component here is this speaker encoder. 
So this speaker encoder is what allows us to preserve the voice of the source speaker. So once again, there are three main components. One is sequence to sequence model, which converts spectrogram from one language to spectrogram in another language. Then we have the vocoder that converts the spectrogram to a waveform. And then this is this uh, speaker encoder, which is optional to use, is used to preserve the voice of the source speaker. Now, I haven't talked about this box here. So this box, what this box is doing is this is used for training uh, auxiliary tasks. What we mean by that is our main goal is to convert from one speech, speech in one language to speech in another language. However, the authors, through experiments, they have found that it is important to use this auxiliary tasks during training because that gave them better performance. And what these auxiliary tasks are, these auxiliary tasks are the predictions of the phonemes in both English and Spanish. You might know what phonemes are, but just to refresh. So phoneme is a sequence of sounds that make up a word. So for example, cat. The phonemes would be ka, t, so two phonemes. So these are the auxiliary tasks. So what's, what's happening is the encoder, which is composed of eight layers of bi-directional LSTMs, the final output of the encoder goes into the multi-head attention and then uh, and the decoder. However, the output of the intermediate layers of the encoder is fed into the decoders for the auxiliary task, which again is the prediction of the phonemes in both source and the target language. And these decoders are also composed of LSTMs. So this is really what the translatotron model looks like. Now, for experiments, the authors used two different data sets. They used a conversational data set, which is composed of English and Spanish speech and text. And they also can uh, use this Fisher data set. It's again, English and Spanish. And the size of the data set is shown here. And what you will find in the experiments is that, so, they, they present the experiments for both of these data sets differently. So first they present the results from the conversational Spanish to English data set. So the results show that if we use the auxiliary loss, so again, that box I was showing, then we get a really better performance. So here, the first one, we are not using auxiliary uh, auxiliary losses of the auxiliary tasks during training. As you can see, the score BLEU is only 0.4, but when we use either source or the target phoneme auxiliary tasks, the, we, get, we get a big boost in the performance. And similarly, they also present the results for the other data set, Fisher data set, same thing. So here, if we are using the uh, auxiliary tasks during training, then we get a boost in the data set, uh, in the performance, as opposed to using just the main task, which is the conversion from speech to speech. Okay, so that's really what the model is and, and the results here. So just to summarize, this paper, it presents the speech to speech translation model that is trained end to end. So there is no intermediate text translations that is that are happening. And also they are able, this model is able to preserve the voice of the source speaker. So this is just one of the first few papers that I've started reading in this area. From now on, I'm gonna study the more papers. And as I study, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share with you guys. So hopefully this was helpful. And if you like the content on this channel, please subscribe. And I hope you enjoy what uh, is being presented in this, in this um, channel. Thank you. Bye.